what is the connection between part 2 and part 3 in IELTS speaking examination? Do you have the answer to this question? I have. Today in this video, I am going to explain you about how part 2 and part 3 of speaking examination are interconnected to each other and I will also explain you the easy strategy to develop your answers in speaking part 3. Hi everyone, this is Yesha with IELTSmaterial.com helping my students achieve their dreams and get a higher band score in IELTS examination. So without wasting any time, let's get into the lesson. Let's understand what is this section. The third part of speaking test is called as abstract discussion. The examiner will ask questions related to an abstract topic and these questions are interconnected with the previous section of the test that is the cue card section. This part of the test may last for 4 to 5 minutes. The number of questions may vary from 4 to 6. You must ensure that you do not speak about yourself as this is about general discussion and not a personal discussion. Three things that you have to keep in mind when you are developing the answers for speaking part three. Number one, do not give personal opinion. Try to avoid personal opinion because this is not about yourself and you always have to focus on general opinion. Number two, give opinionated answers. That is, always try to give some preference related to general but not personal. And finally, number three, Always give examples to the opinion that you're presenting. This will help you to elaborate your answers, also justify your answer and give confidence to the answers. Thank you for watching it till here. If you want to learn more tips and strategies for IELTS, then check out the description below and book a free demo class today. Now here is the connection between part 2 and part 3. If you just look at part 2, it is the cue card which is talking about a story or novel that you have read and you found interesting. There are four cues or I would say bullet points which you would be developing in your answer. Just look at the part 3 question. It completely depends on stories, books or what kind of stories do children like. So here are four questions which are interconnected with part 2. The first question is, how does technology help people tell stories? The question number two is, do you prefer to read ebooks or paper books? The question number three is, why are mystery novels so popular nowadays? And question number four is, what kinds of stories do children like? In this manner, you would see that part two and part three are always connected. Now, let me give you two example answers of two questions. Look at the way the answers are elaborated. Question number one. How does technology help people tell stories? Just start the answer with a general statement and then give the reasoning and also give an example. Here is the answer. Technology has pretty much changed people's lives in every aspect. It has allowed people to make stories enhancing their imagination and creativity. 3D dimensional movies is the best example of technology that tells stories about unimaginable things creating curiosity and interest in the stories. In short, technology has changed the way how people look at things and create stories out of it. Let's take an another question. The question is, do you prefer to read ebooks or paper books? This is obviously about myself because it says do you prefer and hence I would be taking it on me and giving the answer accordingly. Hence the answer is I go for both and it depends on the situation. If I am at home, I would love to read books as I'm more comfortable with paper books. On the other hand, if I'm traveling, I would prefer to read ebooks and mostly the downloaded ones which can be easily accessible. There are other variations as well which can be enjoyed during traveling and those are audiobooks. Therefore, according to my convenience, I either prefer ebooks or paperback books. If you just look at the answers, I have introduced my answer 
and then also make sure that I conclude my answer with a conclusion. This is the way that you should try to elaborate your answers in speaking part 3. A quick action plan to look at before summing up. The first thing is give full answers and take the initiative. Number two, think about how the topics can be developed so that you are ready to explore the questions and the topics. Number three, answer each question directly. Do not speak or do not give answers anything unrelated to the examiner's question. Number four, try to link your ideas so that your speech flows well, making you more fluent. Here is the end of our series with the last session. And now it is your turn to practice many tests and questions with taking different topics. I would suggest you to practice speaking and writing with an expert trainer who would definitely give you a detailed feedback to help you improvise and get a higher band score in your IELTS examination. Stay with us for more IELTS learning and learning different strategies and topics. Do not forget to like, share and subscribe IELTS Material YouTube channel. Keep learning and stay updated with IELTSmaterial.com. Thank you. Bye-bye.